Have you ever been in a spot where it seemed like everything and everyone is against you? Maybe you've struggled with your health, and it seems like as soon as you get over one thing, all of a sudden there's something else. Maybe you struggle struggling financially, and you, as soon as you think you can pay a debt, another debt comes in, another expense comes in. Maybe you've got relationships that you've been battling with, and you're just struggling to hold them together. Maybe everything keeps breaking. Every time you go to get in your car, it's broke. Every time you hop on the tractor, it's broke. Every time you, you use some tool, it breaks. It seems like it's a never-ending thing. Maybe the pressures of being a mom or a dad, it just seems like, I can never do it right. It seems like you're always failing your kids. Maybe the pressures of your job. It seems like there's no way out. And you're just struggling. You're battling every day, wondering, when is this going to end? God, when is this trial in my life going to end? How much longer do I have to go through it? And we battle day in and day out. How often do we waver in our faith? How often do we lose hope in what has been promised to us? We struggle. The world seems like it's all against us. It's falling apart. We can never get ahead. Our relationships are struggling. Our kids are battling. Everything just seems to keep breaking. I mean, it's just, God, what is going on? Turn with me this morning to Romans chapter 4. Romans chapter 4, and I'm going to read verses 16 through 25. Romans chapter 4, starting at verse 16, it says, Therefore, the promise comes by faith, so that it may be by grace and may be guaranteed to all Abraham's offspring, not only to those who are of the law, but also to those who are of the faith of Abraham. He is the father of us all. As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations. He is our father in the sight of God, in whom he believed. The God who gives life to the dead and calls things that are not as though they were. Against all hope, Abraham in hope believed, and so became the father of many nations. Just, just as it had been said to him, so shall your offsprings be. Without weakening in his faith, he faced the fact that his body was as good as dead, since he was about a hundred years old, and that Sarah's womb was also dead. Yet he did not waver through unbelief regarding the promise of God, but was strengthened in his faith and gave glory to God, being fully persuaded that God had power to do what he had promised. This is why it was credited to him as righteousness. The words it was credited to him were written not for him alone, but also for us to whom God will credit righteousness for us who believe in him, who raised Jesus from the dead. He was delivered over to death for our sins and was raised to life for our justification. Against all hope, Abraham, he's about 100 years old. Sarah is 90 years old. Have you been in this spot in your life where you are certain there is no hope? That's Abraham. 
against all hope. When you looked at it from the physical, Abraham's a, a hundred years old. His body's as good as dead. Abra, uh, Sarah, she's 90 years old. Her womb is dead. There is no way that she could ever bear a child. But Abraham, in hope, he believed. Against all hope, he believed in hope and became the father of many nations. This hope that Abraham had, this hope, is a, it's, it's an expectation that Abraham had. His hope expected that his God is faithful and will, not might. He knew that his God will deliver what he has promised, and give Abraham the, the offspring, as many as the sands on the seashore, as many as the stars in the sky. You know, we go through life and there's certain things that we expect. We expect when it becomes wintertime in Minnesota, we expect cold. We expect snow. In the summertime, we expect rain. We expect mosquitoes. We expect Heat, we expect these things because we see it lived out in our lives every day. But we struggle with the hope in God. We struggle with expecting that God is going to provide what he has promised. And we lose hope when we're struggling in life. We say, God, why am I always sick? Why am I always struggling financially? Why do, is every relationship that I have, whether it's with my parents, my kids, my friends, why is every relationship just a battle? Why does everything that I own continue to break? It seems like all I do is fix. And then I fix what I fix so that I can fix it again. The pressures that we, we live under, we struggle with it. We lose hope because we forget. We lose our faith. What we're going through in Romans, it is talking about faith. We lose faith against all hope. We need to have faith like Abraham. Against all hope. He believed. He believed. In this hope, in this expect, expectation, Abraham just believed against everything else that was going on. Hebrews chapter 11, verses 11 and 12. Hebrews chapter 11 Starting at verse 11, it says, By faith, Abraham, even though he was past age and Sarah herself was barren, was enabled to become a father because he considered him faithful who had made the promise. And so from this one man, he has, he, and he as good as dead, came descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as the countless as the sand on the seashore. Because Abraham considered God faithful. He knew that his body was dead, that Sarah's body was, was dead in any chance of ever giving birth. How could this ever happen? But he knew that God is faithful. We may have people in our life that continually fail us. We may have people in our life, circumstances in our life, vehicles, equipment, all kinds of things in our life that fail us. But God will never fail us. And do we believe this? That God will never fail us. He is faithful.
And it says, yet he did not waver. Without weakening in his faith, he did not waver. Through unbelief regarding the promise of God, he did not waver what God had promised. What has God promised you? Do you know what God has promised you? Are you able to stand strong against all hope and in hope believe that God will take care of you? Do you believe that God will heal you? You know, maybe you're thinking, well, you know, I, I have cancer. I've been given six months to live. I believe that God can heal you. I know that if you believe Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior of your life, that God will heal you either in this life or the next. Do you believe that? Do you believe that God will heal you? Do you believe that God will provide for all your needs? We struggle financially and we think, God, why are you not providing God provides for our needs. Are you without house, clothes, food? Are you without those necessities in life? God provides for your needs. What are the wants that you've created the debt in? But I also know that God will also give us the wants as well. God is not a prosperity God, but he will and does meet our needs, and he'll even go above and beyond that he wants to bless us. He will give you the wisdom that you need as a mom, as a dad to raise your children, to speak life into your kids. Do you believe that? Abraham, he did not waver. What has God promised you? If you don't know what God has promised you, get out your Bible and read it. Read the word of God and find out. Do you know that he has promised you everlasting life? if you believe in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. He has promised that he will not leave you. He'll not forsake you. He has promised that he'll not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. He'll provide a way out. He has promised that you are going to go through trials. You're going to go through trials of many kinds. He promised that. He knows you're going to. But in those trials, do you lose hope? Or do you know that the God of all hope will get you through those trials? That he will strengthen you when you feel weak? That he will give you rest when you are completely drained? Do you trust that he is working for your good? Because the Bible says that God works for the good of those who love him. So even in the midst of your trials, are you believing, do you have hope that God will take care of you, that he will provide for you, that he is there for you? If you struggle with what God has promised, and these are just a couple, then I encourage you to open up your word of God and read it. God is calling us to not waver in our faith. To not waver in our hope for eternal life. He is calling us to not waver in our belief in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of our life. He is calling us to not waver in our belief that Jesus died for my sins, for your sins, to forgive you of all your sins. Abraham didn't waver. Instead, he was strengthened in his faith and gave glory to God.
to God. And there are others in the Bible. In 1 Samuel verse, chapter 30, verse 6, David's arm, village had just been destroyed. All the, the women and children were taken. Two of David's wives were taken. And here's David. David was greatly distressed. 1 Samuel 30, verse 6. David was greatly distressed because the men were, were talking of stoning him. Each one of was bitter in spirit because of his sons and daughters. But David found strength in the Lord his God. Against all hope, against all odds, David found strength in the Lord his God. His, all of his men wanted to stone David. And David found strength in God. And after this, David goes out and he overtakes the army and gets everything back that was taken from him by the strength of God. Not on his own, but relying on God. Do you feel beaten up by your family, by your friends, by your co-workers? Maybe you feel like they're about ready to stone you just like David knew that his, his army, his friends, the people that surrounded him, that were protecting him, wanted to stone him. Are you feeling that in your life today? I encourage you to find strength in the Lord. Abraham was fully persuaded that God had power to do what he had promised. Genesis 18, 13 and 14. Genesis chapter 18, verses 13 and 14. Then the Lord said to Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh and say, Will I really have a child now that I am old? Is anything too hard for the Lord? I will return to you at the appointed time next year, and Sarah will have a son. Here even, even Abraham's wife, Sarah, is struggling. She laughs. And Sarah, she even, she even lied. She said, I did not laugh. And, and he said, yeah, you did laugh. And yet Abraham was fully persuaded that God had the power to do what he had promised. Matthew 19, verse 26. Matthew 19, verse 26. This is... Jesus speaking. It says, Jesus looked at them and said, With man this is impossible. But with God, with God, all things are possible. All things are possible. There are things going on in your life today Trials of many kinds. Maybe it's ailments. Maybe it's financial. Maybe it's relationships. Maybe it's your, your kids. Maybe it's everything continually to break and you can never seem to get ahead. Maybe you feel like there are so much pressures in life that you can't even take another step. And I'll tell you with you by yourself, yeah, it's probably impossible to get through it. But with God, all things are possible. And Abraham, he believed against all hope. In hope, he believed that God would do what he said he would do. That he had the power to do what he said he would do. Do you have the faith and believe that the same power that raised Jesus from the grave lives in you as a believer in Jesus Christ? Do you have faith and believe 
that Jesus died for you. Maybe it starts there. Maybe you feel that you're not good enough. Maybe you feel that you're unworthy of his love. Maybe you're struggling and saying, God, how could, you, how could you forgive me? Do you know the family that I was raised in? Do you know what I've done in my life? Do you know my background, my history? God, there's no way that you could ever forgive and love me. And you think that there's no hope. But against all hope, God is calling you to in hope to believe. To believe in the power of God, the creator of the universe, the one who spoke and there was light, who spoke and there were fish in the sea and birds in the air, who spoke and there were creatures running across the face of the earth and there was water and there was land and then he breathed life into man. And he created a woman from his rib. And the human race was born. And do you believe that he created you in your mother's womb? That he knit you together? That he breathed life into you? Do you believe in that God? Do you believe in the God that loves you so much that in the midst of your sins, he sent his son Jesus to die for you, to forgive you. Do you believe that when the bottom seems like it's falling out, that God is there with you, that he hasn't left you? He is standing there by your side. And he is waiting for you to call out for him and say, God, I need you. God, I need you. I can't do this on my own. I need you. And then do you believe that God will take you through it? Do you believe that on the other side, God is something more amazing yeah, and maybe it might not be on this side of heaven. On earth here, it might, be, it might be a hell that you're having to live. But there's a heaven that awaits you if you believe in Jesus Christ. If you've surrendered fully to him, if you have a relationship with him, if you live a life of repentance for him, do you believe? Because if you have that belief, there is always hope. When you have that belief, when the car breaks down for the 343rd time, you can just laugh about it. When the tool that you fix 27 times still doesn't start or breaks again. You can laugh because you know that there is hope. These are things, we get so worked about things that, that are going to rust, that are going to decay, that are going to fall apart. We get so worked up about them, but we forget to give it to God. Do you believe that God will give you the wisdom he even tells us to ask for wisdom and he will provide. You're struggling as a, as a mom, as a dad, have you asked God for wisdom? You're struggling as a young adult, as a teenager. God, what do I do? Have you asked God for wisdom? And do you trust that he will provide you with that wisdom? Maybe it seems like there is no hope. And I would tell you the only way that there is no hope 
is if you do not believe in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your life. But even if you don't, you still have the opportunity to believe. So there is always hope in God. Everything else may fail you, but God is faithful always. Always. We should be expecting that God's going to provide what he said he has promised. He promised his son for all who believe. He promised eternal life for all who believe. He promised the forgiveness of sins for all who believe. Yeah, he did promise you're going to go through trials, but he promised he'd never leave you. He'd never forsake you. He promised to give you strength, to give you rest. He promised to give you the Holy Spirit as a believer in Jesus Christ to comfort you, to counsel you, to guide you, to lead you every step of the way, to reveal the truth of God's word. If you're wondering where the hope is, open your Bible. And this is filled with truth. This is filled with the hope of God that is faithful. God loves you. No matter where you are, no matter where you've been, God loves you. And your hope, may it only be in him. Because that is the only hope that will never fail you. Amen? Amen. Well, have an amazing week. Lord willing, we'll see you here next Sunday, the last day of February. Remember to keep those that are struggling in prayer. This time of year, as I said, it's the highest time of depression, anxiety. If you haven't heard from somebody, reach out to them. Make a phone call, stop over their place, send them a message, encourage them, love them. Have a blessed week.